In this video, we'll go over 10 weapons that are weird, and the fact that they did something unique, or were uniquely bad. And at number 10, we have the Dark Iron Pulverizer. This is a two-handed mace that has an amazing effect, where it has a random chance on hit to stun the target for 8 seconds. That is longer than any other stun that a player character can use in-game. But from Vanilla WoW anyway, there were some expansions in which a rogue could get a 10 second kidney shot stun. But anyway, that would have made this weapon really amazing, if it wasn't for the fact that it never procced. Well, never isn't the correct term for it, it's more like you just had an incredibly low chance to proc, where if you attack something continuously for 5 minutes, you might see it proc one time. It procced so infrequently that it was basically useless and just kind of a gimmick weapon. But oh boy, if this thing did proc, then you could totally swap to a better weapon and make full use of that 8 second stun to maybe kill something. And at number 9, we have Finkel's Skinner. This was a dagger weapon that could be used as a skinny knife, and was the most sought after skinny knife in the game, because it gave you a plus 10 to your skinning level, which when combined with the plus 5 skinning enchant, allowed players to skin boss level mobs. So in order to skin Onyxia, you needed the skinning dagger and the plus 5 enchant in order to successfully accomplish that task, which was needed in order to get the scales from Onyxia, which were then used to create the cloak which was needed in order to complete Blackwing Lair. Later on in Classic WoW, they added a sword item called the Zulin Slicer, which was a drop from ZG, which gave the same effect as Finkel's Skinner, except on a sword item. So classes who couldn't use daggers could use this sword instead, and be able to actually skin boss level mobs. So despite not being a max level dagger, it was a very sought after dagger for its unique effect. Number 8, the Ravager. This was a two handed weapon drop from the Scarlet Monastery, with a special unique weird effect that had a chance on hit to force your character into basically a blade storm for 9 seconds your character would spin around and just do damage to everything within its AoE. Except, unlike Bladestorm, you couldn't move during this weapon's proc, so you were just stuck spinning around in a circle, hoping things in it wouldn't move away from you, which was entirely possible in PvE situations. Now, the damage this ability did was okay for its level, and procced a lot of good class abilities, but most people grabbed the axe because of how cool the ability looked and not really because of its usefulness as people would use this weapon at max level just to have their character spin around. They removed the ability to get this weapon and miss, so the only way to acquire this weapon again would be to wait for the classic WoW servers. And at number 7, we have a unique item called Andonius Reaper of Souls. This is a one-handed sword legendary weapon that only existed for 10 minutes, but it had really good stats for those 10 minutes and did a crap ton of damage. And I guess that's kind of the whole point of the limited real-time duration. The item was used during a quest chain for the Atyesh staff, where you'd fight a demon called Atyesh, who is dual wielding the sword, and drops one of them in the middle of the fight, which you can pick up in order to defeat him with it. The sword was unique for being one of only two conjured weapons in Vanilla WoW, the second being the Hammer of Expertise, of course, which lasted one hour instead of ten minutes. And at number six, we have the Death Blow. This is a two-handed sword that has a chance on hit effect to deliver a fatal wound for a set amount of damage. Now despite the fact that this weapon says it deals a fatal wound, what it really means is that it just does some extra damage. As in, this fatal wound doesn't automatically kill your target. It also doesn't mean that it only activates when the target is low on health or something. To, you know, do a fatal wound it's just a chance on hit to proc some extra damage, just like other weapons which state the exact same thing. Like the Jeklik Crusher, which is a chance on hit to wound the target, producing bonus damage. Fatal Wound just seems like a flavorful way to word the same thing. And there are four other weapons of Vanilla WoW that also state they deal their bonus damage as a Fatal Wound. There's also items like the Halbert of Smiting. Unlike the Death Blow, this weapon has a chance on hit to literally decapitate the target and kill them instantly. Oh wait, it doesn't actually do that? It just does bonus damage instead? Alright, it's just another ability with a very flavorful way of saying that it does some extra bonus damage. I don't think Blizzard knows what decapitate means. 
Well, to be fair, this weapon did have another distinction, where its bonus damage proc could proc its bonus damage proc, kind of like how a Shaman's Wind Fury proc could proc Wind Fury. So it did have a chance to do some really good damage, but I don't think that was intended since it was hotfix later on, and just turned into a normal proc weapon. One that decapitated the target and killed them instantly, of course. And at number 5, we have the Hydro King. This staff, which is a drop from a boss in Nomergon, gave a little bit of frost resistance, which is okay, I guess, but it also allowed the user to just passively breathe underwater. And since this was a weapon, you could swap it in if you were underwater and fighting things, to allow your breath meter to reset, and then switch back to an actual good weapon later on, all while still being in combat. And because this item is a weapon specifically, that actually made it really useful, as you could swap it in and out during combat. So it was one of the few weapons that people could actually carry around in their bags to have in some of those just-in-case moments. You know, moments where you have to randomly be underwater for a quest for long periods of time. Moments like this almost never happened, but if they did, you'd be happy you carried around a hydro cane in your bags. And at number 4, we have the Dazzling Longsword. This sword has an effect where, when you hit a target, you have a chance to decrease their armor by about 100 for 30 seconds. So, armor pen, before that was a stat put in the game. But also, while this armor pen effect was applied, the target cannot stealth or turn invisible. So this sword item basically applied fairy fire to your target, which is really good in PvP against stealthy classes. The unfortunate thing about the sword was that it was a main hand weapon in vanilla. So you couldn't just equip it into your offhand in order to try to fish for procs on classes which could dual wield it. And it was also a low level epic item which dropped from random mobs of around level 40. So it was hard to obtain. There was another low level weapon which was a little easier to get called the Phantom Blade. With a similar effect except it lasted for 20 seconds instead of 30. And was also a main hand weapon. Late in the Burning Crusade, Blizzard changed both of these weapons to just be one-handed instead of main hand, which means they could be equipped in the offhand slots, in order to use its proc more effectively. Although by then, their damage would have been way too low to really mean anything in the Burning Crusade, although these two weapons seem like they would be really good twink weapons for the 30 and 40s brackets. And at number 3, we have Typhoon. This is a two-handed sword, which gave you an increased 1% chance to parry which is a really good weapon for Death Knights, who wouldn't be added to the game until two expansions later. In Vanilla WoW, tanks included warriors, and that concludes the list of classes which could tank. And warrior tanks always equipped a one-handed weapon alongside a shield, not two-handed weapons. And parry is definitely a tanking stat, so not very useful for classes who could use this as damage dealers, as they would love that stat to be something that increased their damage instead but I guess cases could be made for PvP usages, whatever. There was also another low-level sword item called the Guardian Blade, which was a two-handed weapon that gave you bonus armor and defense stat. Two tank exclusive stats that classes that can use two-handed weapons don't really care about, but I guess cases can be made for classes using them to level up with, where having a little bit more defensive stats might matter. In case you're wondering, no, druids could not use these weapons, druids cannot use swords. So even the class who only cares about the stats on the weapon couldn't make use of the defensive stats on these weapons. Plus, bears can't parry attacks anyway. And at number 2, we have Sulthrae's the Lasher. This was a two-handed sword with a proc chance to debuff a target as well as put a dot on them for 15 seconds. Although it's not on this list for that proc, it's actually here because in order to obtain this weapon, you had to combine two other weapons together, which dropped from two different bosses. So far as I know, I think this is the only weapon in the game which required you to combine two weapons together in order to make it, which wasn't part of a quest or profession. So in order to make this weapon, you have to head over to Zulfarak and kill two bosses who would each drop a weapon called Jangthrays, the Protector, and Sangthrays, the Deflector. Jangthrays had an on-use effect that would combine it with a Sangthrays from your inventory in order to create Soulthrays. So unlike other created weapons, you didn't make the weapon through a profession. You literally just combined two items from your inventory to create a new one, which is unique in of itself, and isn't really something 
to my knowledge, that's been done since. Of course, there were some weapons which you can click on them in order to transform them into other weapons, but this isn't that, as it's literally combining two weapons to create a brand new one. And at number one, we have the Manual Crowd Pummeler. This was a two-handed mace weapon with a really good on-use effect, which would increase your attack speed by 50% for 30 seconds. But with the downside that you could only use this effect three times total, and then you could never use this effect again. This is one of the few weapons in game with limited charges on its ability. That once you used all three charges, you just straight up could not use its ability anymore. And it was turned into a normal stat stick. That being said, it dropped off a low level boss in Nomergon. So if you wanted extra charges as a max level character, you could just go in there and farm it to have multiple copies of the weapon. And this is exactly what Feral Druids would do. Because you see, on certain illegal servers, people have been playing older versions of WoW for many years, and have metagamed everything there is to know about those old versions of WoW. And it's through these less than legal servers that people found out that Feral Druids could actually pull competitive DPS, as long as they just farmed out a crap ton of manual crowd pummelers. And no joke, if you look up how to perform the best DPS for Feral Druids in vanilla WoW, they will include this weapon as part of the normal rotation. Despite the fact that you can only use the effect three times before the weapon is useless. And why does this work on Feral Druids and not other melee classes? Well, that's because Feral Druids don't care about the weapon's damage. Weapons to them were only stat sticks, as a weapon damage didn't increase their melee attack damage. So, using the Crowd Pumbler to get a 50% increase attack speed for 30 seconds, which is ridiculous I might add, was such a great effect that it let them forego the need of having actual good stats on the weapon. Whereas other melee classes would be completely neutered if they had to use this weapon just for a 50% attack speed proc. Because if you swap this weapon to another one, the effect would end immediately. So only Feral Druids could take advantage of this effect's unique ability at max level. Of course, today, you can still get this weapon, they just removed the charge system in Burning Crusade, and gave it a more reasonable haste proc. This weapon was only available and usable in this way in vanilla WoW, basically. Alright, and that's it for the list. Do you know of any other weird or unique weapons that existed in vanilla WoW that I may have missed? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one.